What is a comet? To answer that question, we've contrasted the common scientific view with new evidence that challenges that view. The new evidence directs our attention to the electrical behavior of comets, almost entirely ignored through the course of the space age. Of course, theoretical issues will always arise when facts and interpretations are intermingled. But when a theoretical interpretation masquerades as fact, that is a violation of the first principle of scientific investigation. For many decades, it's been held that a comet is a leftover from the primordial formative phase of the solar system. That phase is typically counted in billions of years. And more often than not, the common theory will be stated as fact simply because the idea is popular in the scientific media. And so we read that comets are often referred to as dirty snowballs. They are left over from the formation of stars and planets billions of years ago. This popular message blurred a crucial distinction between what is known, the undisputed facts, and a theoretical supposition. So we're told a story. Comets are basically dusty snowballs which orbit the sun. They are made of ices such as water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane mixed with dust. These materials came from the time when the solar system was formed. In this case, the faith in a theory is ironic since no fact about comets has even remotely substantiated a comet's origins billions of years ago. And there are dozens of reasons not to believe that idea. So it's encouraging to see a sliver of doubt now creeping into official comet science. We see it, for example, in the science magazine Sky and Telescope. Like asteroids, comets are suspected to be remnants of planet formation in the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. Suspected. That's a refreshing use of language actually describing the present situation. Always remember that today's textbook theory of comets arose prior to the space age. And where interpretations differ, the first reference should be the factual bedrock of comet science, not theoretical suppositions. With this in mind, we offer here a comparative analysis of two models, the standard model and the electrical model. Both models are sufficiently explicit to invite a wide range of scientific tests where the inherent predictions of the two models can be readily compared to objective findings. The standard model, largely unchanged since the 1950s, sees comets as a window to the formation of the solar system. Here, these bodies are composed of the primeval matter from which the sun and the planets formed, perhaps holding keys to the origins of life. A comet is a dirty chunk of ice, and its visible displays are due to warming by the sun such that vaporized water ice and other volatiles erupt as jets from the surface. As we found in our first electric comet documentary, the standard model did not fare well in the course of the space age. Taken as a whole, the failure is confirmed by the direct testimony of leading comet investigators as they confronted a continuing stream of surprises. Together, these surprises add dramatic support for an alternative perspective, an electric model. The electric model starts with the evident electric field of the sun, a massive electric potential across the volume of the heliosphere. In this view, comets possess accumulated charge and they move on distinctly elliptical orbits. That means they periodically plunge through the sun's electric field. And as they enter regions of different charge, these bodies discharge electrically. 
To place this summary in its historical context, the door must stay open to a new and perhaps unsettling truth about planetary history. When we observe planetary motions today, we see highly stable and predictable orbits, as if the planets had moved this way for a billion years. But it has not always been so. Our confidence on this point comes from the consistency of global testimony. It seems that every culture on Earth preserved vivid memories of world-altering catastrophe, and the agent most commonly cited is a comet. Irrespective of differences in language, the cultures describe a monstrous form attacking the world, and these descriptions consistently use the local words and symbols for a comet. Well, this is ground we've already covered, but we cannot afford to ignore a consistent and global human pattern, no matter how challenging to conventional opinion today. Converging human testimony from around the world assures us that solar system history was punctuated by episodes of instability and interplanetary violence. Comets, asteroids, and meteors originated in the electrical excavation of surface material from planets and moons. As we've documented in earlier episodes of this series, the most notable players in these events were our two closest planetary neighbors today, the planet Venus and the planet Mars. For this reason, our reconsideration of comet theory requires that we address the worldwide memories of planetary upheaval. Comets are not what we've been taught, yet recent investigations of comets can take us directly to this extraordinary conclusion. One of the most telling milestones in the history of comet science was the deep impact mission to Comet Temple 1. But here is a remarkable dilemma. As occurred in all prior visits to comets, no appreciable water ice was seen on the surface of this active comet. From the first disclosures of dry cometary surfaces, theorists speculated that such surfaces simply hid the icy, watery content beneath the surface. Then, in response to solar warming, subsurface pockets of water vapor formed, exploding through the crust to create the observed jets. Of course, the envisioned rupture of the surface would expose the presumed ice below. But as occurred in all visits to comets, no detection of Temple 1 subsurface ice was ever reported. Nevertheless, mission scientists tell us that infrared readings did detect substantial water ice in the ejecta cloud. The enigma deserves investigation. What happened at the surface and below the surface at the moment of impact? Most NASA scientists interpreted the fast-moving cloud as vaporized silicates. The cloud was self-luminous at an estimated 1,000 to 2,000 degrees Kelvin, and the low angle of the impact and blast propelled the ejecta downrange. The infrared readings of the ejecta occurred about three seconds after impact, as the cloud came into the view of the infrared camera. These readings show what NASA scientists describe as a narrow beam of water. This water column was easily distinguished from the rapidly moving dust cloud and was very close to vertical directly over the impact site. That's a bizarre contrast to the trajectory of the dust cloud. How did a vertical column of water get instantaneously separated from an explosion of dust heated to over 1,000 degrees and propelled downrange? The electric comet model offers an answer. The heated silicate cloud would be ionized, a plasma, a conductive pathway for an explosive electric discharge. 
The evidence indicates the discharge occurred between a negatively charged nucleus and a surrounding region of positive charge. An abundance of hydrogen ions gathered at or close to the surface of the nucleus would provide the necessary conditions for two things. First, an instantaneous electrical breakdown or discharge on impact. And second, an equally instantaneous electrochemical response to the discharge. Consider what is already known from laboratory experiments. In a condition of electrical breakdown, hydrogen ions from the solar wind, combining with the oxygen and silicates, can produce an abundance of hydroxyl and or water. This very process has been proposed to explain the enigmatic water on the planet Mercury. The electric comet model suggests that the detected column of water directly over the impact site occurred along the path of an electric discharge, and that always means roughly perpendicular to the surface. Water created explosively, electrochemically, in the ejecta, even if no water lay beneath the dry surface of Comet Temple 1. This intriguing answer takes us deeper into the infrared readings. The conventional model predicted that comet water ice would contain substantial quantities of dust. This dust content would be expected to show up as refractory particles in the ice of the collimated ejecta plume. But amazingly, the ice particles themselves were free of dust. It seems the instruments measured virgin water, water freshly formed, as one would expect from the instantaneous electrochemistry of water production from hydrated silicates. This very point is emphasized in a recent analysis by Dr. Franklin Anariba, a specialist in electrochemistry at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Allow this possibility into discussions of comet science, in particular the unsolved mysteries of missing water and water creation by comets, and the picture changes dramatically. When we follow this possibility, the missing water on the surface of Temple 1 becomes an affirmation of the electric comet model.